Welcome back, everyone. Today, we may be preparing for the Obsidian Invasion. Obsidian users curious about Emacs. I saw this Reddit post, and uh, this guy here, probably not a native speaker. This sounds like it was translated, but I'm going to read this really quick, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into it. Sit down, have a, a warm beverage, relax. Let's get into this. Okay. Hey there. I've loved Obsidian for the past year. It's my second brain. I use it for storing future ideas, managing current projects, writing, thinking things through, and organizing logical reasoning. It served me super well, and honestly, my laptop is basically just an obsidian machine at this point. I recently stumbled across Emacs, and you know how it goes, rabbit hole time. I like the emoji of the rabbit and the books. That's pretty good. I'm not afraid of the rabbit hole. I just want to know about it. I love learning everything about a tool before deciding if it's for me. When I learn all I can, I'm empowered to pursue what's best. So I'm wondering, what are Emacs really good at? Where do they shine compared to Obsidian? Where are they worse? If you've used both or made a switch, I'd love to hear your thoughts, workflows, or even your aha moment. Thanks in advance. All right. So yes, very interesting. And I've been thinking about this too, because um, I tried out Obsidian just to see how it works, uh, see the pros and cons, because it's a very popular program for knowledge management, for taking notes on things that you read, or pretty much any ideas you have, and then interlinking them. And... Um, it's famous for creating this uh, this sort of graph of all of your different nodes of your ideas and where they link. Though um, I'm still not exactly sure how having that visual graph is helpful. If you like what it what it really does, other than looking cool, and looking cool is enough. But I, uh, I'm still not exactly sure what the the main a purpose that's serving. But yes, yeah, so Obsidian is a knowledge management program. You can create and link notes, graph related concepts, and it uses markdown files. So on its back end, it's just using plain text files like we would do in Emacs or any other text editor. So why use Emacs? Uh, well, let's actually go back through the post here and talk about a few things. One part I thought that was interesting was when uh, the poster says, I love learning everything about a tool before deciding if it's for me. And I will say you probably can't do that with Emacs. Uh, it's a, it, it is a pretty complicated tool. I started using it around 2016, and it was pretty much just for org mode. That was the, the main draw about it. Uh, the, the thing that caught my attention about org mode was how if you're writing something, because I'm primarily interested in using the tool for writing, you can document, outline, and compose all at the same time. So you can be sort of laying out your document logically and then be filling in the gaps with text and then rearranging things as you go and uh, saving things off to the side, hiding things. If you, if you um, are not going to include something in your document, you can kind of hide it and um, then come back to it if you want to. You can do a lot of um, highly intuitive um, and surprising things with it. Uh, but there was no way to learn all about it before deciding if it was for me. Um, like I still try other tools just out of curiosity, um, but the deeper I go into Emacs, the more I find um, how difficult it would be to replace it with any other tool because uh, I just can't get the functionality. And now with uh, language models, I can even do a lot more Emacs Lisp uh, configuration, which was um, sort of a stumbling block for me before. If there was a certain functionality that I wanted and I couldn't actually code it myself, I would just have to go without that uh, because uh, some of the use cases were so specific that uh, if I was going onto forums or trying to get code for it, it just would have been uh, impossible. Uh, but now with language models, uh, that can help in that regard. Even though the output you get is not always perfect, uh, you can refine it down to something that is um, surprisingly usable. So why use Emacs? 
Well, uh, longevity was one of the things. Uh, Emacs has been around for ages, and it will remain. Even if it uh, goes away, you know, it's free and open source, so it won't really ever go away. It's, uh, you can always, you know, just repackage it. You can even write your own version of it. Uh, general purpose. So while Obsidian is, uh, is well written for the specific thing that it does, Emacs is a, a general purpose tool. So it's a, it's a living environment for editing text. Uh, so you can kind of do virtually anything you want with it in theory. Um, you're not sort of uh, locked into a specific mode of working. And even with the steep learning curve, it's still a superior writing environment. So opening a document in Obsidian, uh, you're basically pulling from a markdown file, and it's just like being uh, in Microsoft Word or a Google document in terms of moving around your document. I think they've integrated the the Vim keys, so you can like use Vim keys to move around the document, I think, uh, optionally. But uh, other than that, the experience is um, is is a very plain sort of vanilla writing experience where you're you're moving around, you're scrolling, you're you're highlighting. Uh, you don't have the sort of fast and crazy intuitive things that that you can do in Emacs. Um, things that that would just be uh, silly almost. Like like for example, if I just wanted to take this line that I'm on and um, make every uh, first letter capitalized, I could just there's a key command that just does that. So it's a little weird things like that that you don't think would be useful, but then uh, surprisingly they turn out to be useful, like transposing words, like, oh, I want to flip those, and you just hit a key and it goes, or transposing sentences, yeah, little little things like that um, that make it a superior writing environment. Of course, the, uh, the cons of Emacs, yeah, there is the steep learning curve. You don't have the sexy knowledge graph that you get in Obsidian, though I'm sure somebody could code something like that. At the very least, you could probably code something that on the back end um, could create a graph like this uh, as a PNG or something using GNU plot or uh, uh, one of the, the Python plotting scripts. Uh, you could probably do something like that. Uh, I'm sure you could if you really wanted to. And of course, like I was saying, you can create your own node system. Uh, so one of the, the key features of Obsidian is being able to link documents together. Um, so org mode provides that support built in. You can hyperlink different notes in your system together. And um, so what I typically do is I'll open up one file that kind of acts like a, um, a notebook, let's say, if it's on one topic. Like if I'm learning about uh, you know something historical or something like the the French Revolution or something, I'll have a French Revolution document, one note, and I will have uh, basically hyperlinks that go to sub notes from that, and that's really all you need. I find that that goes quite far, um, and a lot of the functionality from Obsidian that I liked, uh, I've built into. Uh, my own note system here, one of the things I liked, you could just highlight some text in your note and then create uh, a new hyperlink from that uh, without having to actually go in and create the document and then it, it, it can automate that. Some of the functionality that I like from Obsidian I just brought right over uh, and you can really only do that um, in a program like Emacs where you can do your own configurations and uh, customize things that way. So yes, I would say for the, mostly for the intuitive writing process and the, the customizable environment, the general purpose living environment of Emacs, I would say it's something good to try out if you're an Obsidian user and you're curious. I'd say after all these years, the, uh, the steep learning curve was worth it to go through. But there you go. Just some thoughts on that. I'm going to leave the video right there. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.